Hi, it's Daphne. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be picking my September TBR by playing Becca's Bookopolathon. If you don't know what Becca's Bookopolathon, it's Becca and the Books version of Monopoly with bookish prompts. When you land on the property spaces and all that jazz, they're all suggestions for what you could read. So I'm going to be doing five rolls, so five book prompts. If I get a double, that will mean I'll have to add a roll and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Just fair warning, I printed out my little cute printable at the library, but they only printed it in black and white. So I did a little DIY coloring to make it more cute, um, but it is what it is. If I'm looking down, it's because the board is in front of me on the floor. Let's get started with roll number one. So here is the board. I have chosen the little ducky and I have my two six-sided dice here. So here's roll number one, nine, a five and a four. So let's go nine spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Buildings, buildings. <laughs> All right, so for the prompt, of buildings, I've picked The Magnolia Palace by Fiona Davis. This is a book of the month pick from a while back, from January of this year. So not the oldest book of the month book I have. Um, so as you can see on the cover, there is a beautiful building. This book takes place in like the 1920s and particularly around this specific building, the Frick Mansion. So the story seems to be about this woman named Lillian. Her family seemed to die in the Spanish flu outbreak in 1919. She's 21 and her life has, has fallen apart. So she's like desperate. She's very beautiful. She's like a sought after model um, in New York. And she comes across this Frick mansion where her own visage or like her face, her image is a part of the building. So that's like perfect for this. It also says, uh, this is a tantalizing novel about secrets, betrayal, and murder. And it's gonna go back and forth in time, so we'll follow Lillian, and then it looks like we'll follow this other woman, Veronica Weber, 50 years later, um, and her experience with this Frick residence. So this is perfect. It has a lot to do with this building, and I own it, so I should read it. And it's a book of the month book pick, and I try to read one every month, so that's a win for sure. All right, now let's move on to roll number two. Okay, so here is roll number two. A two and a three, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this says publication or set since the year 2020. Then for the prompt published or set since 2020, I've picked Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This was published in 2020, so it just makes the prompt. This is a book that was floating around romance, booktube for a while, and it still gets highly recommended. I know this is a couple of people's favorite book, and I'm very excited to finally get to it. I'm in the perfect mood to finally pick this up. I have been reading more dark romances. So this book is about a female sea captain, I believe, and she is married to like a pirate. And then she comes across another man, a pirate hunter, and there is like this love triangle thing going on and it gets very dark. Um, and I'm very intrigued I, like I said, I've been reading more dark romances, so I think I am prepped and primed and ready to go to finally pick this up and hope I love it. All right, on to roll number three. Okay, this is roll number three. A two and a three, five. One, two, three, four, five favorite genre. This one is too easy. The board is being so nice to me. I landed on favorite genre. So for fave genre, I picked Aphrodite and the Duke. This is a new release. It just came out. I picked it up at Barnes and Noble the other day, and I'm so excited to add this to my collection. I think the cover is quite nice. I mean, I usually don't love 
uh, covers with bases on it, but we got a beautiful black woman on here. So snaps to that, I'm here to support. And it's a historical taking place in England. And like, you never, or you hardly ever see black female leads take place in like that classic historical romance genre. So I am very excited to read this book. So the drama in this book starts right off the back. It sounds like Aphrodite was in love with Duke, uh, the Duke of Everly, and he must have been in love with her too, but she gets jilted and he ends up marrying another woman. Then four years pass, she returns back to London because of something her mother needs her help in or whatever, and she's trying to avoid him. But the Duke is now a widow and he's trying to get his second chance at love with Aphrodite. So it's a second chance romance. I am very intrigued and I'm just ready for all the love and historical London ton drama that ensues in this world. And I'm also interested to see how her being black ties into the story. Is it gonna be like the Bridgerton show on Netflix where it's kind of just the norm, where it's accepted like everybody's diverse? Or is it gonna be something that's noticeable and people are gonna judge her for? So I'm curious to see how that's handled as well. I didn't experience life back then, so obviously there were gonna be people of color in London, but I don't know the history. Um, but I'm in interested to see how like this fiction novel portrays it and which, and which direction they choose to go with it. Are they going for realism? Are they going for fantasy? Or are they going for sadness and depression? <laughs> Oh god, I hope not that one. Okay, roll number four. Okay, here's roll number four. A five and a five. Oh no! A five and a five. That's a double. Alright, I rolled a double, so that means I have to add a sixth roll and one extra book to my TBR. But it makes it more interesting. So I'm not like that mad. It keeps, keeps the game fun and exciting. But let's see what we get for this one. All right, so let's go 10 spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This one says, features a death. Oh gosh. Death. Ooh, okay, fun, fun, Reaches of Death, mixes it up. Kind of gets me away from just like reading romance all the time. <laughs> okay, nice. Then for the prompt features a death, I've selected She Who Became the Sun. I am so excited to finally read this book. I've been holding on to it for so long. This actually was published in 2021 and I picked it up maybe a couple months after, but obviously early enough to get the hardback. They already have the paperback and I still haven't read this book, so I need to get on that. So this book is about a Chinese woman. Yeah. So this book takes place in China in the 13... 40s, so a very, very long time ago. But the premise is that this young woman was given like, I guess like a reading by a monk on like what her life was gonna be. And she's like from a poor village and stuff. And the monk said her life was like, not gonna come of anything, but her little brother or her brother was supposed to have this epic life and like be a hero and all these things. Turns out her brother dies young from a disease or a sickness. Oh my God, there's like a person outside on the water tower. That is so scary. Sorry, it's very distracting. But her brother ends up dying from like a disease or sickness and she takes over his identity and like his destiny becomes her destiny. And I'm just so excited. I've heard great things, but I've also heard like some mixed things at the same time. And I think there might be some like sapphic representation in here. I've heard some things about like fisting. I don't really know what I'm getting myself into in that regard because I was reading this purely for fantasy. Um, so I wasn't expecting any sexual content coming out of this, but people have been mentioning like fisting. So just FYI, if you've been looking at this book to pick it up, but I will definitely let you know 
how it goes and how far everything in that realm evolves. But overall, I'm very excited um, to finally pick this up. It just gives like great feminist energy with a woman taking control of her own destiny. And apparently it looks like she's gonna be like some kind of general in an army and snaps at her, girl, you get it. Take over the world, honey. Now we're on roll number five, which would have been my last roll if I didn't roll that double because now I have six rolls. So roll number five. All right, here's roll number five. A five and a three, which is eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, okay. So this one is big book, more than 500 pages. Then I got big book and the book I'm picking is this one here. This is a new book I picked up. I actually got this at a signing event. RF Kwong was there. I went on her release day in New York. I mean, obviously I live in New York. So this is a signed copy from the Strand. There's the signature, so cool. She's so smart. It was really interesting to hear her talk about the writing process of this, her inspiration. I also just happened to meet Monica Kim there. I'll put her YouTube channel down in the description. She's a very cool, interesting booktuber on YouTube here. And yeah, honestly, I was so excited. I felt like I met a celebrity. So she was really, really nice. I snagged a picture and yeah. I was starstruck. I was like more starstruck meeting Monica Kim than I was RF Kwong <laughs> because I got to like talk to her, you know? So anyway, Babel is a standalone dark academia novel. So the main character is this young man named Robin. He's a Chinese immigrant, I guess you could say. He's been brought over to England, specifically London by a professor to study languages and he's been enrolled in Oxford's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, aka Babel. And the magic system is based on languages as well. So Arif Kwong kind of came up with this because she was studying Chinese after losing it in her teen years. And in her relearning it, she was doing translations and she learned there's a lot of like lost understanding when you translate something there's like special, there's like a magic within a language and how like you can only fully understand something in a specific language. And that idea kind of evolved into this. So I'm intrigued. It sounds so smart and intelligent. And I know she is such a like genius woman. So I'm a little intimidated, but I'm very excited. I will probably buddy read this with Eliza and Kaylee again. I know Kaylee picked up a copy recently and yeah, I'm gonna do a dedicated reading vlog for this. I already started it. I vlogged my time going to the signing and I'm gonna continue it with the reading vlog of this book. And yeah, if you wanna know how smart she sounds, like the full title of this book is Babel or the Necessity of Violence, an Arcane History of the Oxford Translators Revolution. That sounds like a textbook. <laughs> I'm a little intimidated, but we'll see how it goes. I'm still very excited and honored to have this copy. We're on roll number six. Hopefully this is my last roll if I don't get another double. Let's cross our fingers. <laughs> This is roll number six. A six and a four, which is 10. Nice, no doubles. So that is the last roll of the game. 10 spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Chance! Ooh, fun! Okay, for this one, I landed on the chance space, which means I have to pull a chance card. A chance card has like a list of books I've like preemptively written on them. Some of them are good, like quote unquote good books, like books I'm excited to read. And then other ones are books I'm like intimidated by or like scared of or have been on my TBR for like a super, super long time. So let's give them like a little shuffle and then I'll pick one at random. I'm gonna give them a shuffle. I can see what they are. I promise, I'm very nervous about this. I have some <laughs> like 
I'm not gonna say they're sus, but like some books that I'm like scared are gonna be on my TBR. But like if I don't read them, I'll never read them. So it'll be like good motivation. And if I don't like it, I can just DNF and move on with my life. So, okay, shuffled. Okay, I just shuffled these. Here's the chance card. Let's pick the one off the top. Oh my God, please don't be awful, please. I'm scared. Pajingo, oh my God, it's fate. <laughs> And then the last book you saw from my chance card is Pachinko. I have started this book in the past. Like I said, I got up to page 34, chapter five, but I wasn't in the mood to be sad, so I put it down. It is a chonky book. So this book takes place in the early 1900s where a young Korean girl is pregnant but doesn't have access to her baby daddy. The man on the water watering tower is shirtless. He's working. He's got work gloves on and he's pulling off pieces of the water tower. But like, I mean, I guess it's hot. Why are you shirtless? Are you strapped in, dude? I'll get a shot of him for you in a second. Okay, I always hate it when people tell me they see stuff and they don't show me. So here's the man. He's working. He's working, he's shirtless. I don't know what he's up to, but I hope he's strapped in and safe because it is a long way down, guys. It is a long way down. Well, he probably hit one of the tears first, let's be honest. <laughs> so yeah, she is a young Korean woman who's pregnant and then a sickly minister passes through her town on his way to Japan and he marries her to provide her like a better life, I imagine. This is supposed to be like an epic family saga. Um, of this Korean family's life in Japan. I think Pachinko is also like a gambling game and I'm interested to see how that ties into the story because gambling is very illegal. It's important to understand that Japan was like occupying Korea and they looked down on the Korean people a lot. Like the soldiers and stuff really thought the Koreans were less than them and they didn't have as many rights and things like that. So that is a big aspect of the historical elements of this story. So there is a lot of tension between the Koreans and the Japanese and um, I guess Japanese imperialism and like taking over other countries. So I'm very excited to learn more about that historical aspect and see where this young woman's story goes and how her life choices affect the generations that come after her and I'm probably gonna cry. I think Reagan from Peru's project read this a while back and cried um, so I don't anticipate me not being emotionally upset um, and that's like I said that's the reason why I stopped reading it the first time. It's got a National Book Award finalist sticker here and I know it's gonna be a beautiful story. I'm excited to buckle down and put on my big girl pants and read this book. That's it for my September TBR. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun watching me play this game. I sure did. <laughs> I'll probably keep this board and maybe I'll play again in the coming months. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already and I'll catch you in another video. Bye.